uh, let's just start off, right? So uh, first off, I would like to just uh, generally uh, just ask a question from all of you until she can connect back. So uh, I know all of you are advocates of sustainable living and uh, being um, more connected with nature in general, right? But because of this pandemic and because of this lockdown, I think a lot of people who weren't also had a chance to appreciate exactly how nature's connection to us is. Uh, and I just wanted to ask, have you had like um, an influx of people talking to you about it? Has there been an increase? What was your personal experience there? Um, who wants to take that first? Do you want to, I don't know. Are we going in a kind of a, I don't know, strange. Um, you can take it off. Kick it off, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Um, <clears throat> I think initially um, people are sometimes not very... Um, how can I say this? Anna. Oh, sorry, sorry. First of all, um, every, to everybody's watching, thank you so much for being patient. I think we are maybe 10, <laughs> 15 minutes a bit uh, lagging. And thank you so much for being patient. Um, I'm not very sure who's uh, watching, waiting, uh, listening, or tuning <laughs> out. But thank you so much for waiting. Thank you so much for um, tuning into this conversation. Um, um, <clears throat> sorry to answer your question. I think this came as a, a surprise to mm -hmm. everybody. A lot of people were just like, ah, what? What? <laughs> you know, uh, we were all um, this thing. But um, signs of, um, I'm, I'm talking from a very in, um, kind of an environment sustainable perspective, um, mm -hmm. signs of this um, uh, imbalance has mm -hmm. been shown for some time. Uh, unfortunately, for many of us, this kind of you know pushed it in our faces like that. But the signs of imbalance or signs of um, uh, climate change or has been it, it's been happening for a long time. Uh, but I'm glad that now that everybody's you know kind of in a, in an influx, uh, people are listening to it. Although, however, something that I do notice is we still have that. Um, uh, the economy over ecology uh, kind yeah. of mindset, unfortunately, which has <laughs> actually been the reason why we are here in the first place. Um, mm. The fact that people are first, we, is, is what we will first think of it is, oh my God, I will lose my job. I will not have money as over, as over the, 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 the state of where, oh, I'm, I'm getting my um, air, my water, my food mm. from the earth. And, you know that that disconnection is still still there unfortunately for a, for a lot of us um so i don't know yeah sorry I'll, I'll let somebody else take that question take it from there <laughs> but that's what i i felt it's it's something that has been there it is a wake-up call though i think for sure right. um in, in my personal experience it's strange i mean just like um uh, um nadi said also the question that i've got was very based on how do i come out of this funk or in this rut that I'm in, um, to be really honest. I, I know that a bunch of people out there who's really passionate about, um, you know, the planet and kind of sees it as a blessing in disguise. But, um, you know, just being on social media and what I've seen daily and the questions that I get is usually based on how do I come out of this you know I'm feeling this way because of quarantine and because of being in isolation um, and I feel like that also can be um, you know it can be advantageous to us if we look at it in a perspective where this is this has given us the time to really go into introspection and reflect on what works and what what does not work and by uh, finding that spiritual connection we also will develop that sensitivity towards ourselves and in and in return you know towards the planet um, and and that has so far been been my personal experience. But I have openly been talking about this on my platform, and I've been really trying my best to direct that attention towards the planet and how you know we could be compassionate towards the planet and the sentient beings and um, all of that. So, um, okay, I can go next. Um, so I actually will echo with a lot of what Gaia said. Um, and I also feel like this has been a time for a major reset 
um, transformative change really happens without a catalyst or a crisis. And so this has actually given a lot of people time to rethink. And it's been rethinking in a few different ways. So it's been rethinking about, like, do I like what I'm doing? Does my career satisfy me? And that is also making people think about, like, like I want to be part of the solution instead of part of the problem or just ignoring the problem. So I think it's made people think it and just with everything that's happening in nature with like thousands of birds coming to the beaches of Mumbai to like the air pollution dropping, it, it's shown us that, that actually nature can survive without us very well, but how do we play a part and how do we play our part in, in the, in, in, on earth? Um, and the other thing I would like to say, so I have seen a lot of people who are changing careers, who are, who are quitting what they're doing for re- their careers and also I've seen a lot of people who are changing their lifestyles so now all of a sudden you don't feel that like you're out every night you figure out that okay, you know home meal can be as good as a meal in a restaurant or something so even our lifestyles and, our, and, and that's also brought in a lot of home gardening so I feel like not only has it made people think differently but we are seeing trends in how people's behavior has also changed in, in terms of urban farming and um, those kind of things. Um, so from my end, uh, I think it was a good time to reflect uh, on ourselves because it's the time that most of us didn't have time to actually sit back and reflect on ourselves. Uh, so it really gave me time to kind of sit back and really think about my impact in some cases. Sometimes you enjoy about what I, what I like to do and enjoy um, a lot of things that, you know, it just helped. You know, I used to be a person who said I'm busy. But now I feel like it's a word that I will never use because I've got enough time to kind of enjoy life. So that's something that I really learned during these two months. At the same time, what I've been doing is uh, I've been also contacting with uh, like-minded entrepreneurs and sharing. Uh, like we've had conversations where, you know, we've showed people that we are struggling. It's something that our customers should know or the other peer entrepreneurs should know that we are all suffering this is going through this hardship together. It's not that just one person is going. So we've been supporting each other from just talking to each other, sharing their problems and sometimes even the solutions. My solution can be helpful for them, how we've done different things because we are all small scalers. So something that I did might inspire them how to do something as well. So we've done a lot of those kind of conversations and supported each other as well. So that's what I've been doing for almost now two months, two and a half months. Okay, that's lovely. Thank you so much for all of your responses. And I think uh, let me connect. Yes, hi. I hope you can hi, yeah, yeah, now you're fine. Thank God. Okay. I'm so sorry. I was having some connectivity issues and had to sort that out. <laughs> no problem. So uh, since you're here, I'll just hand over the controls to you. So uh, everyone, let me is part of our uh, chocolate crew. She's a writer and digital marketer. And uh, she's very involved in the radio aspect of media as well. So she'll be moderating you guys today. Let me, you can take over. Hi. Hello, I'm so sorry I'm a bit late. How is everyone feeling today? Good. How has it been? Yeah? Go on. Someone said something, yeah? Was it? Okay, okay. So so, uh, first things first, I wanted to go a little bit into detail about when it comes to sustainable living because all of you all have your own expertise when it comes to the different aspects of it and of course you can feel free to pitch in anytime you need to so I just wanted to uh, start off with Nadisha right and I want to know um, when it comes to sustainable living at home right uh, Sri Lankan people are not the most well educated in terms of how you can practice sustainability at home in light of that, what do you think we can do as individuals, you know, small steps that we can take to uh, promote sustainability from the comfort of our own homes? Any ideas? Okay. Okay. So let me, let me take that uh, 
uh, thing. And um, you mentioned that Sri Lankans are a bit, you know, in that general umbrella term. But I kind of have to counter that and say, you know, actually, as an as a nation, we have been a very, very, how can I say, very in touch. We have been we have been a nation who have been very in touch with the nature around us. From I mean, let's take my grandmother's time, right? Uh, three generations before we were. I mean, I remember one time where my grandmother said she she repurposed my school uniform and made a petticoat out of it. Uh, sorry, oh, yeah. uh, an underskirt rather. She she uh-huh. is, un, she saw so this army. My school uniform it's white, so she made a um, um, kind of underskirt from it. And and that was the time when everything was. I mean, even the milk bot, the milk, the, the the glass bottles to the paper to everything. We are how can you say not? I mean, we we say not. we we would you you know because we yeah. didn't have anything we didn't have a lot of like now oh, there's so much you know and even like even a bag or even shoes i remember my uncle said so he had a you'd have a like they they uh, they were in the time when pencils were first invented mm-hmm. so they would use the pencil they would go to the very end of the pencil and they would stick something on top of it and then kind of extend it and then and use the so that those were the times that i think sri lankan and and not far long not far not far away so i think it has it's just that we have a lot of options now mm-hmm. and that we kind of i mean there's a lot of distractions out there you know a lot of lot of distractions and but we, but inherently we as as, as 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 a nation i mean we use the coconut tree right we used everything the coconut tree. in our in our kitchens we would have everything made out of coconut without really you know oh connecting the dots of oh sustainability and all of those big concepts <laughs> global warming and climate change and all of that we knew nothing but we were yeah. like oh you know it's a little thing and even okay let's say even take dairy i mean we would have a kiriamma at home and we would <clears throat> get a milk from it and give the give the patia you know so we were very kind of how can i say very local um, localized agrarian con- community right so we have been inherently i mean you are just ask your mother you say ask your father i think we we can uh, really go, go. It's, it's, it's for us i think it's a matter of taking a few step backs and kind of going down memory lane mm. you know and even uh, i don't know for me personally um something that even for everybody i think this covid situation really brought into light is um just living within your means you know living within your means and this particular situation really um opened our eyes to actually what we need uh, you know as opposed to what we want we need you know um, the the i mean food i think is a it's a, is a, is is up right up there on top of everything you know so it's it's a matter of i don't know i for me i think it's very taking very small steps because a lot of us in you know the sustainability or um, the ecological um, spheres where, where when we talk about all of this we get a lot of like, like a lot of stress and a lot of tension uh, about and even like i mean when we just talk about this even people okay people think oh single use plastic you know people get a lot of stress trying to um, live this sustainable lifestyle and they think it's a sacrifice and you know i have to give i don't have to be um, i i have to let go it's a sacrifice that you're making to live a sustainable lifestyle but i don't really think so i think it's a very you know it's you live a very um, kind of mata ati metike mata ati i will live this way and 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 again you won't you won't starve you won't starve because you live a sustainable lifestyle you won't um, i don't think you will really reduce of the number like like the level of experiences that you get mm-hmm. um but yeah i don't know that's my really it's, it's kind of a more simpler way of looking at life uh, a less materialistic way of looking at life i think sustainable living a sustainable life and and being more connected to to nature uh in our capacities yes yes we live in the city yes we have various uh, you know various requirements and all that but i don't know i i really feel that especially even something that i really love that what lonali is doing is is building businesses out of um the the the, the out of this type of issue, um how can i say circumstances you know so i think it's really like take um, like i don't know it, it just just taking this covid situation as an example i think just you know stepping a few few steps back and really analyzing okay what do we really need and what we can do without you know 
and 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 something for us strange that amma i've been listening to uh, dr vandana shiva and uh, david suzuki's uh, talks i mean i think those two people are i mean are right out there talking about they, their entire careers have been based on uh, you know um, uh, climate activism and and they talk of a very simple lifestyle a very simple localized lifestyle which i think we can actually sri lanka has great potential i mean we have everything we need right here <laughs> we have food we have water we have air we have a lot of things i mean i think okay let's say oh, we might have a bit of an issue with logistics if you know we cut oil but still i think we have <laughs> everything they need here and i think i i hope we as a nation really crazy um, 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 benefit that we have over others i, I think uh, even as island nation you know the other big perspective yeah <laughs> i, I completely agree but yeah definitely definitely because i feel like we just need to get in touch with our roots a little bit more to realize that we have everything that we would need to be more sustainable compared to the rest of the world definitely uh, is there anyone else who would like to add on to her points by anything that we would like to share please go ahead um, first of all i want to ask if i'm clear can i see you well okay uh, there's a slight lag a very slight lag how about now better uh, still I think it's better. Yeah, it's better. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so I'm just going to walk around as I find better reception I'll share with you. Now what you said about how my feel like uh, with my country also. And um my grandfather makes everything like you know from uh, you know furniture to um he has sculptures, he grows food as yeah. And I've been and here kitchen they don't have a separate side recycle they don't have a separate guy you want clear the the voice it, it can't be heard okay how about now better okay uh, yeah better okay where yes. where okay it's not the start from the start yeah okay i think it should be okay now yeah all right so um so like i said what, what you guys see in the background is all the things is this thing that i'm making up with my dad father mostly and ever since i was a child i saw him you know growing you know food as yams as vegetables um you know, whenever the furniture would break he would fix it um and and something ever since i was little since i was a little child right and um, this and today this morning i realized um, i recycle at home so there are different bins that i use for plastic and whatever and i realized that, that they don't have plastic and and when i asked them why they said that's because we don't have much plastic at home right and then i realized just like nadik said it's not done consciously we are living sustainably no <laughs> that's just how they live you know from from the greens they have like today they, they made a, Like a, like a green thing. The first time or the second time, I think um, I'm, I'm having it in my entire life. Everything is organic, homegrown. And whenever I want to get away from Colombo, it's like a vacation for me because that's that's their living. And and I really want to um, confirm what um, Nadi said. This is just the first time. I have to you know uh, into you know three or two generations before before us to kind of realize. It's not a sacrifice. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, but I do want to uh, ask you. Uh, I mean, ask everyone rather a small issue that I have noticed recently when it comes to sustainability, specifically with the COVID situation, right? So I noticed that the number of deliveries have gone up, right? And um, people seem to be throwing off their plastic bags. Now, Sri Lankans have this. whole thing where they would even reuse a plastic bag you know again and again a couple of times before they get rid of it but now because of the covid situation even my parents the minute they get the deliveries they throw away the plastic bags and they don't even touch recycling bags because the whole process of washing and you know interacting with that itself is a hassle so in that sense what do you think we can do in in when it comes to moving forward with this situation 
um maybe I'll, I'll take half of that question um so yeah actually something that i noticed is i mean even though we see a lot of these animals and all that coming out um of course there's definitely less pollution um i just i, I mean I, I i went through a study or a survey that at really spoke about even the chemical usage the chemical usage sanitizers all of that has vastly increased and even the waste from even through delivery um any amount of packaging it has vastly increased because you know people don't want to um have any each um have any have any risk with contamination so to be very honest i think even the the the, the virus it actually i think it has, in terms of sustainability or climate action it has actually kind of pushed the other way or had has has a negative impact on the world at large even even deliveries right for example if i were to go uh, with my tool bags and go to my polar nearby i would buy, buy stuff and it would reduce that uh, the, the 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 farm to table that that entire supply chain whereas now we have an additional um, um, plink the a chain in that middle chain uh, but to be very honest i mean with this situation i really don't see um, kind of um, a kind of an escape out of this unfortunately even with the packaging i suppose as individuals we can we still have that ability to have some kind of control over um, what we use for, for example now even i got a few things delivered home so what i did was i had my two bags it was horrible <laughs> like he was he bought it in a box and then had <laughs> everything in this and then i'm like i'm sorry for the time and you see it's it's very in that sense it's actually more cumbersome more 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 i don't know awkward and and not really productive at all uh, in that sense so i'm not i personally i don't see any kind of out of it at this moment that maybe until things go back uh, but again it's very difficult for people to get now if, if you are used to a certain trend now we are very used to and and people have that in their mindset at oh policy in uh, we had i had used this in another bag in another bag we had that before covid also like even in a supermarket we would go we would have a bag in a bag in a bag but it with this it's just i have a feeling un unless we are very conscious about it ourselves in the individual actions especially i don't i don't really see a thing out of it i don't know maybe others might have a different uh, perspective or an outlook on that yes anyone else would like to add on anything um, with regards to i like to i like to add on to that i mean we can't really give any advice because the who has give i mean there's no proof also yet on what surfaces the uh, virus stay for how long that kind of research it will take time to actually get the right information and right regulation but i think as individuals like nadi said individuals if there's a bag if we can since we are home we have time we may be able to wash it and uh use it for keep it within our house that's the only solution that i see is like there's plastic bottles you know, always collectors are coming and we plant some very simple solution that's the only way to do it. you can't put it out maybe you can wash it and wash your hands then afterwards because there's so much obviously the regulations are such you can they're telling you not to keep it uh we can we are not any, we are not uh, actually allowed to give any advice to say this and that we are not the people but i think individually i think you should try to find solutions with your waste to your house at this time that is the best solution that uh, can, i can give i mean i'm trying to keep my waste within the house as much as possible yeah because it's sorry yeah so just yeah, just one thing yeah even because even before this look whole cold covid situation i would used to be somebody who didn't use single plastic i had no plastic coming inside the house but every, like it it's changed so i think we need to adapt as well in a very wise way you know this 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 period is very uncertain in a lot of these ways and i really i feel sad when people have to stress on themselves in addition to everything that is going on to try and you know have have more impact on on you know or even at least have less impact in that sense so i think it's it's a kind of a balance that we all need to really um, strike when, when and as as we go and something another thing that i notice is uh, this hasn't gone this this situation the, the even the virus hasn't gone to um, far off communities uh, you know out of colombo and all that so i think there are still the, the the whole local local economies are still functioning uh, 
under curfew and all that but still they are functioning in the way that they were used to so even in the game like i remember i i went to where is it um, Arugambe Batiklo that area and they, 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 the people there I remember they bought sugar and tea in paper bag in paper go to still in 2018-2019 these people they still bring it in you know paper go to and they, they don't use plastic there They're very or very less even the locals in, in this community they use plastic and, and that type of thing very, very less um, yeah that. Yeah, that's neatly, that's neatly. Um, uh, my next question is uh, directed at Seema Lutra, of course, you know, the co-founder of Form Tree Co-working. And I want to know, now that the economy is finally opening up and um, people are starting to go back to work, right? Um, I feel like in today's society, um, up until COVID-19, there was a form of um, an initiative taken towards sustainable living, you know, at home as well as the workplace. But now with the whole stress of the pandemic, I feel like a lot of people would not think too much about the sustainable aspect of their workplaces. So what do you think in terms of a workplace, people can do the small things maybe that people can do uh, in terms of practicing at least a little bit of sustainability, even though it's a tough time right now. Um, so I think in terms of like workplace, we have like most most people are not going to work or a third of them are going to work. So there's also savings in that aspect. Mm -hmm. and then, um, I think at the workplace, what people can do is um, you know, take their own mugs. It's, it's more hygienic to take your own mugs and cutlery to work, which I guess they do in the boxes. Um, but also, like, just think a little more about not using a lot of tissue paper and hand sanitizer to sanitize everything. But I don't know what's the option, like, like what's the other option as well. So, yes, you know, maintain your hygiene and wash your hands instead of, you know, using a lot of tissue paper or sanitizer. But, um, yeah, even, I mean, that's something we as a co-working space are also struggling with because um, with all the, um, you know, with all the, the regulation and how to start a workplace again. There are a lot of uh, things that we need to do as well, and like sanitize across the roof and all of that. So, so it is it is a difficult one. I mean, the only one I can actually see is that, and, and I think it's, it's actually a great trend. What I see through COVID is that a lot of people are now working from home or working remotely. That means that they only come into work when they need to come into work. So obviously, that with with like transport, we need transport put down and as a trend is something that is helping people uh, or businesses become more sustainable. Um, yeah. What I would say. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. True. Is there anyone else who'd like to add on to that particular aspect of things? Anybody? All right. Okay. Moving on. Um, so when it comes to sustainable fashion, of course, this is directed at Lonali. Um, I know. I want to know that specifically in Sri Lanka, uh, the retail industry is booming, and of course, right now the export industry is not doing as great as it would have been in the past. But at the same time, the retail industry has been um, uh, has been the reason for an increase in the carbon footprint, and specific, specifically things like fast fashion. Uh, so, in terms of that, what would you assume that people can do? Um, from home because uh, personally uh, something that I do is I like I, I if, if I have a piece of clothing that I don't usually uh, wear anymore I would like to like you know at least cut it or stitch it into something else and turn it into something totally new so that I can wear outside so what do you think in terms of that we can do in terms of fashion and uh, the retail industry uh, so talking about retail industry it's when you take fashion it's not just the retail industry but fashion as a whole is the biggest pollution from the whole supply chain not just retail uh, when i talk about the whole supply chain it's from the cotton farmer to the person who's wearing it and who's disposing it uh, so as designers we something that we don't look at is yeah we design a nice garment but we don't think of what goes into sometimes sometimes we do think right now but uh, most Importantly, we don't really design for the clothes. So I think uh, we as designers have a huge responsibility 
in creating a product, I mean, if it's fashion or any other product, right? We, uh, if we are inventing something, I mean, that's what happens to the plas plastic bottle, basically. They invented uh, a bottle uh, to be better than a glass bottle, to be a, uh, a better solution than a glass bottle, and then didn't really uh, address the fact how to dispose it, right? I think for more than 50 years back. Um, so I think we should start thinking as designers or inventors or creators, whoever starts this process first, has a huge responsibility to think how we can dispose it or whether it's circularity or whether we disband dismantle it. There are so many design processes that can be applied. Uh, so that's the first thing because we need to give the consumer the option. Uh, we need to create a product that give the consumer an option to uh, uh, make it sustainable uh, when you are disposing it. So when you talk about retail, yes, it's a trend. Fashion was always a trend driven uh, industry. So a um, lot of people have a season. So people go behind season. People will look at other people and, and okay, there's somebody wearing it. So go wear it. Let me buy it. There's, uh, for example, Thanksgiving came up. So people will go up, get a discount. So these are all these things that are uh, 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 marketing promotional things that are uh, getting people to buy clothes right every day and consume what it, what they don't want. People which people don't realize that they don't want it, but then there's a discount, so you go just buy. It. Um, but I think uh, now it might be slightly different. It's going to be hard for retailers to give discounts. It's going to be hard for people to go and just buy. It. So it's a situation is different now. Um, so. I think what we can do, I mean, anyway, I don't think Sri Lanka was very much into fast fashion. I wouldn't say it because looking at Europe or US that those are the fashion, fast fashion driven uh, industries, but not in Sri Lanka, I wouldn't say it. Like Nadi said, it's just that we need to take a step or two back and start uh, thinking, okay, what, what did we do before? We used to mend clothes, uh, just clothes. We used to, uh, like you said, you're doing the exact solution. I mean, cutting and making something you want with a piece of fabric you don't want. Small steps. It's just taking a step back. Uh, I think we are in a right situation where without going further trying to follow the fast fashion trend, take a step back and really, this is for us, it's the best time. We should learn from other other countries who has gone it and felt it. So this for us is a good time to kind of realize it. Um, I think retailers uh, also need to take uh, some sort of solutions. Designers have a huge responsibility. Um, consumers also have a responsibility. They already, I mean, after COVID, just like food, clothes also, it's going to be like, you don't, you're not going to buy if you don't want it, right? You're not going to spend on clothes. So, so how do you keep, I mean, you have to be still fashionable or you have to wear something. It's going to be a need, right? So as consumers, how do you kind of figure it out? It's, um, maybe you do swapping. Uh, you can swap clothes among your friends. Uh, you can, like I said, we used to go. We had little tailors around us. We used to go and make a stick, put a stick. That's a whole. We used to do a lot of things. I mean, go back and figure out. Can some? Can we help somebody to um, um, who's without a job? Maybe we can give them to uh, mend some clothes up for us, right? And get some other people. So much of things that we can do, we can the, the, the systems can pop up really. A um, lot of reusing uh, ways to reuse clothes. Um, I mean, um, downcycling, upcycling, you can add value and bring it, make it into another garment. You can downcycle it and making it into a duster. There's so many things that you can do with a piece of fabric and a garment if you don't have. I think consumers also have a huge, I mean, Obviously, the product may not be designed in a way to dispose it at this moment uh, because that's something that we have to now do it. But if you have something in your hand already, I think there's so much as consumers also that they can do. Definitely. Definitely. I 100% agree with you. Is there anyone else who would like to uh, fill in on the concept of uh, sustainability under the fashion industry? All right, um, moving forward. So um, I want to direct my next question towards Gaia. Um, is she still here? She's here, yes? 
right uh, so um this is of course uh, in terms of self fulfillment now um guy has always been a practitioner of you know being satisfied with what you have and finding in a peace you know in uh, practices like yoga and uh, being you know satisfied uh, so what i want to know is uh, when it comes to a world of ever growing desires where you know wherever we look every place that we look into every everything we see um is just you know flashing in our face with things that we don't even need but things we want at the end of the day you know things like marketing and advertising growing and that of course is one of the main reasons that it's hard for people to live a sustainable life because they keep buying more things than they actually need so in terms of self fulfillment what do you think we can do um to practice it and be more happy and content with who we are and what we have um i have this um, crazy wake up call you guys can hear me yes 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 um i had someone um, i put everything on instagram when i go shopping for groceries i put it on instagram and someone messaged me saying you use a lot of plastic you know you're you're being part of the problem and that really woke me up um and like i love constructive criticism so, so that that really made me look at myself as to where i stand and you know, what i do and it it made me change everything Um, and from that point onwards, even if I were to go buy something, I would. I have this practice. I I, I always share this with my partner as well because we come from a background where we didn't have much money. We, we we were broke individually and together for a long time. So when we started making um, you know money, uh, we would constantly just go buy a lot of stuff. <laughs> you know, just go shopping and go crazy. Um, and this really opened my eyes up to where we stand. And I I never want to become part of it. I, I always felt selected to me. If I'm, if my actions don't really match up with, you know, what I stand, doesn't really mean anything. Is so, I would constantly ask myself, um, how bad it is. If I really do need it, is when I buy it. Um, and believe it or not, I don't own a lot of clothes. I I own a really few items. Trust me. Like if if you just come on and watch through my life. be wearing the same t-shirt in most of them <laughs> because uh, I'm, i'm quite happy and satisfied with them you know and if i really need something if i have a shoot or if i have something important then i would buy something and um i think living like that is so free you know and then that question asking yourself question of that you need to start to actually you really need from spending unnecessary money and just becoming a hoarder <laughs> i used to be that and and that's not what i want to be i saw what i want to represent especially after covid and i i had the opportunity of being part of certain retreats that really made me um fall in love with nature and really develop so much compassion for the planet because the planet keeps giving regardless of how much we take from her mm-hmm. and, and it's really time to be kind and give back and show her some love and um those retreats really changed my life about how i treat the planet really uh, something i share quite often with people around me as well um like even with my mom my grandparents are a different generation together but my mom so 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 i, I always share these things with her and 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 even with my partner he loves to shop but you know we've had this conversation we really come to that understanding it's really made our life simple simple living is amazing thank you for that i can i completely agree with you because i feel like ever since i myself started asking the question of do i really need it yeah. it kind of sets off a spark in your brain and and you realize okay maybe i don't need it because sometimes we shop to distract ourselves um mm. you know i mean why why do we call it retail retail therapy because there is some unprocessed emotion or trauma there's there which is not processed so obviously we are going to look for other ways to distract ourselves it may mm-hmm. be some form of stimulation it may be drugs it may be alcohol it may be shopping it yeah. is pretty much the same thing yeah of course of course anyone else would like to add on to this uh, in, uh, in, yes what Hi. Yeah. So, um, I yes, yeah, so self fulfillment is something I've also thought about a lot. The first thing I want to say is because I've done some research on trends and um, like all, like so all the advertising and everything, it, it kind of all is around this basic need of like image, and we all project a certain image to society. And so, um, materialism or shopping, it, it's like a easy way to. up your image in some way if you are wearing you know if you have a Louis Vuitton bag then obviously like you know there 
everyone's going to look at you differently. If you, if you drive in, in a BMW, people are going to look at you differently. So there is that image act ex, uh, aspect of it. And then there is that identity. So I think it's a lot also about like um, something similar to what Gaia said, but not looking for identity for things external to us because this has been done to like through marketing and you know everything we are doing we see on advertising from young girls about like how women are personified and what successful women are not we are constantly messages about what what our identity should be and what is a good identity what is a good self image what is a bad self image and I think now like at this time of reset is really a time for us to kind of create our own identity and something interesting like one of my favorite talks. Uh, is uh, one which Oprah had given to MBA students at Stanford. It's called Life, Success, and Leadership. And I would recommend like every young person to see it. Because say that she said, sorry. Can you say that again? Yes. Yes. Um, Life, Success, and Leadership. Um, it was an interview Oprah did at Stanford. I can send it to you. And actually, it's like one of my favorite, favorite talks. And what she said was that um, throughout, like through everyone who she interviewed, there was one thing that was to be the highest, truest expression of themselves. So that's what the identity is that we're really searching for. But somehow, like through like the psychology of marketing, the identity is kind of misattributed towards external things. What she said was that there is no doing in the world without being first. So it's first about figuring out what is our identity for ourselves and what do we well, what are the things which uh, make us passionate, which make us proud of ourselves, so that we look at image and status from within ourselves instead of what we own and how we look. So that was something I wanted to say. Yes, definitely. Yes, yes go on. Before you guys uh, um, continue, I need to because I have a meeting and a call to attend to. Thank you so much for having me. Um, Thank you for being here. Honestly, you guys, you guys are so amazing. I'm gonna personally message all of you and stay in touch with all of you. You, are, you guys are so, <laughs> so much love. <laughs> See you. All right. Um, anyone else who would like to add on to that before we move forward? Um, like, yeah, just uh, a, a few thoughts. Um, oh, even yeah. this, okay, so I mean, we tend to measure. Um, success, right? We we tend to measure, or uh, it's very strange because we tend to measure success in terms of what we have, you know. Uh, oh, I have this, I have that, and and I think that 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 frequency spoils this constant need for consumption, consumerism as a, as a, as a result of it, right? So even the word consumption is what uh, it's a, it's a form of disease actually, it's a form of tuberculosis. And that word uh, was derived from that. Even, um, I, I mean, I did a, did a bit of uh, in background checking on the GDP of which our economies are based on, right? Or even a country is, see, a country does not measure the, 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 the agricultural or whatever, how can I say, the, the abundance in terms of nature, but it measures um, money or monetary things in terms of a GDP. Right, which is which is strange because even the the, 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 the concept of a GDP actually arrived during the, the war, uh, where they were measuring the, the even the, the, the weapons and, and all of that. Right, so it, it I think it comes from a very a place of a um, lot of um, how can I say of greed and and, and actually you over using or uh, over consumption, you know. So I think um, we have to kind of step take a few steps back and really realize, you know, uh, I mean, just reiterate, reiterate, reiterating on that is to really kind of go slow, take it easy, you know, and not really base our value or our success on things uh, rather than, and, and, and really finding happiness within, uh, and you know, in, 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 a, in a very nice way, rather than kind of reaching out or this, even things like brands, right? I'm, I'm a big, I'm on, I'm not a fan of big brands and big companies, you know, because that, that whole, yeah, it's, it's just, it's, um, that identity or value that I place on myself, why should it be on something external, you know, as, as, as Emma said. So, yeah. <laughs> of course, focusing on the internal values so that you can find yourself without basing yourself off of what you see and who you are on the outside. Definitely. Uh, we've received 
a question, and uh, so this is an open-ended question. Anyone can take this one. Uh, so the question reads: Many people think living sustainability will, will living sustainably rather will cost more financially, and it's that it's not suitable right now in this economy. Is that always the case? Anyone would like to take this question? Okay, can I? I I'm I, I'm sorry. I keep on jumping at this because this is so exciting. Okay. <laughs> Uh, yes, go on, <laughs> but something that I've noticed is, I mean, I uh, I notice it's actually very very cheap to be like it's, it's being hippie and being sustainable are cheap options. Being you know they're not. Unfortunately, it's again what I think maybe social media and all of that is telling you is is that oh you know you need to buy this particular thing to be hippie or, or, or less less you know but actually even even okay let's say even we take food for example um, in my family particularly we don't i mean we have certain whatever things we don't buy for example we don't buy things from a supermarket Hmm. Right. Uh, so it it actually it's and when we then we tend to go to the local farmers or the local polar concept, right? It's and things are actually very cheap. I don't know. I I don't know if this is strange for people, but even like a lot of people who look at my life and I say, Nadi, oh my God, you are very like you live a very cheap life. So I said, yeah. But but I I do understand like there are certain whatever brands or whatever it is in in in. in Colombo, maybe particularly in Colombo, I suppose because of that all all of that uh, there you could it maybe like for example f- uh, substituting almond milk for dairy, which I think is actually yeah it's it's very so if you take in that sense it's which is very expensive you know to to buy vegan cheese over maybe normal dairy cheese you know things like that yes that then it could be very uh, kind of expensive but to be very honest using less is actually you spending less. I don't know. My equation is that. I don't know how how that works. I don't know. It, it, it's it's I don't know. For me, I found it very very cheap. To be very very honest, it's, I don't use a lot of like things on my face. I just use water to wipe. You know, clean myself. And so I think I, I don't know. It's it's it, again individual based. And I've kind of gone out looking hunting for alternatives uh, and homemade remedies and things like that. And it's I don't know. For me, it's very cheap. Um, I, I think it all. Yeah, of course. It also comes down to the whole mindset of all the whole aspect of awareness and the the fact that since sustainability has become such a huge talk in recent times, brands are actually using it to market their products at people, and that itself is kind of creating this image that living sustainability living sustainably requires a whole different budget, and you have to like allocate separate amounts of money to buy these things that make you sustainable. So. That is uh, entirely true. Yeah. I would like to add to that because uh, I agree with Nadi's. Uh, it's a consumer perspective. Nadi, what she says, obviously, for example, if you grow your own vegetables, it's much cheaper than going and buying it. It's wherever organic or go to whatever the shop you want. So it's definitely a cheaper option. But if you look at from a brand or a person who's running an enterprise, uh, uh, on social sustainability or environmentally friendly, right now it's a really actually an additional cost because things are made on a platform where uh, people, um, you know, uh, don't give a sh- don't care about the uh, air pollution or the sound pollution. So we some enterprises are actually spending extra or spending more time or spend. I mean, we are doing it with genuine. So it is right now costly for us. Uh, but I believe in the future, if it must be a mass, it must be for everybody. Right now, it is exclusive because we, everybody who runs a social enterprise, have to go through the extra, extra mile, extra step, make it sustainable to the consumers, right? But if we, I mean, if the consumer, all the consumers ask for it, then there is a high demand. And then, then they, when the supply is high, I think the price will um, should match, right? That's I feel that would be the best future. I, I want I want to personally see as a as a uh, uh, an, an, a person who's running a social enterprise. Uh, but right now, it's not that. So for us, it's extremely difficult because there are so many shortcuts to make it uh, do it. Right? I can just make it make it make any garment I want. I don't, why should I spend more time upcycling? Right, mm-hmm. but it's something that I believe, and I'm I have to do it. Like you said, there's so many other options out there. Green washing, 
using the word sustainability uh, to uh, to brand it. So so for us, it makes it even harder. Right? Mm -hmm. so, so so from an uh, enterprise view, it's different. We are struggling. That is why there is a reason why is it high price. Uh, but I think as a person, a person personally, I think it's must basically everybody should ask for sustainability everybody should consume sustainability. all the businesses should be sustainable it's not like i'm being sustainable and she's being sustainable so that's how i think it's how it should be in the future definitely of course anyone else would like to add on to that all right so uh that is the question that we received so far and um there's one more thing that I wanted to talk about. Of course, this is, it, it relates to clothing because I've noticed recently since the pandemic broke loose and the whole concept of wearing masks became an everyday thing. Um, some companies and some brands have promoted uh, masks that go with this particular type of clothing or, you know, fashionable masks. So, you know, this mask has this pattern and it goes well with these shoes or those shoes. And I feel like that itself is, of course, a marketing agenda. And it and uh, also I've read of, of, of reports where uh, there have been hundreds of masks found polluting the oceans. And that is because people are not disposing of them properly. And people are using disposable masks much more competitive to reusable masks. And seeing as this whole mask situation is going to be uh, going for a longer period of time since we are expected to wear it. Um, what do you think we can do uh, in terms of curbing the issue of mask pollution? Um, so I think disposable mask is in some cases you have to use it. Mm. Uh, especially in medical care, you have to, you can't, uh, uh, if it's recommended, you have to, right? So therefore, it's about how to dispose it. So we need to find a solution for disposing, not basically minimizing the usage. Then we have the fabric mask, which we can reuse of different kind of textile based mask, which is reusable. If it's a community in an area, I mean, in our country, I think fabric mask are right now is okay because it's I mean, we track where the virus is. If there's nobody going there, we can clearly keep ourselves distance from why, why we wear a fabric mask, which is also made according to the regulation. So there are filters that need to go. So that is another thing. I mean, you just because you made it out of fabric, it, you have to go through a process. So uh, do check and get the right uh, fabric masses that you can reuse. Um, but the rest, of course, in Sri Lanka, not everybody can afford it. There are so many people who have made their own masks from a little hanky or, I mean, it's okay to at least some safeguards. So I think there are different ways of looking at it. Um, definitely for disposable, this thing, we need to come up with a bigger solution, not just putting it in the dustbin, but how do we really uh, recycle it, disinfect, and then recycle it. If we can recycle it, definitely you have to disinfect. What is the process for that? That's a huge solution that need, people need to come through. Uh, but like you said uh, initially, like the matching, making it a trend, right? Um, I mean, a lot of trends come with uh, different scenarios. For example, women started wearing pants because of the world war, right? That was a trend, right? It's not uh, when we're going to uh, for the war, women were at home, they had to do farming, so they went in, uh, they started wearing uh, pants. Like, there's always a story behind some every garment we made, why it was half sleeve or whether it's an ex is some sort of you know it's not it's a it's a social something it can be rock and roll that is behind it can be a movie i mean the hairstyle is 19 years uh, when they went to the moon everything was very futuristic so there is always a plot for a for, for a trend to start um so this is another plot um uh, people can take trends in a good way and bad way it's it's, it's, it's personal i think it's very personal uh, you can't say matching your mask is something wrong. Um, I think it's something fun. If it can be a way of communicating at one point, you might be able to actually communicate what you really want to say in your mask. So that might be a very a, a, a method of communication, right? So, um, I think it's an interesting thing to kind of keep an eye on 
um, whether the people match it or whether people really trust it to kind of voice it up or or you know it's 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 a it's a nice trend to have. I'm just watching what everybody does, you know. Um, as a designer, I feel like okay, I need to. Clap. I mean, I shouldn't be like looking at it from one perspective, thinking it's very bad. But okay, what what are people trying to do with this trend? How are they creating it? So that's what is important for me, I think. So uh, uh, whether 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 they use it as a selling point or not as a selling point, I mean, if, it, if they're selling, that's since it's a it's a very uh, progressive thing, like uh, matching the matching it to the shoes. Um, so I think it's something that we right now we should be open minded right now and look at it in a way that you know okay let's see. But obviously disposing we need to figure out the right methods, right way to dispose it and uh, uh, figure out uh, in a better way to do that. Yeah, definitely, of course. Anyone else would like to add on to that particular issue? All right, okay, so we've received one last question, and this is, of course, an open-end question, too. It says, do you think the newfound awareness about sustainability will go away once the pandemic is over and normal life resumes? Anyone would like to take that up? Do you want me to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, yeah. Um, I, 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 again, uh, I think it's very difficult to. That's the thing. Will I hope? Okay, so how I'm going to say it is okay. Normalcy is going to be different. You know what we are used to might have to change. So I think we have to still adapt. Uh, it's very easy. You know, it's it's like I mean the COVID could be a trend. It's it you know came up and and then it it pushed away. You know you know. But I still think whatever the learnings that we got, actually a lot of my friends even have have truly have have profound um, personal reflect uh, reflections. As to what what you know they 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 wanted to do after this, if at all, oh you you know. So I think we have to. I don't know if we should just let it go like that, but I think we should really maybe take a lesson from this. You know, this as if, as as a as an as a species, I think we are going through a lot at this point. So if we do take. Um, it just you know shrug it away. I don't I don't think that as a species we've learned anything. See even like businesses, right? Even businesses, even nations, even governments. I think we have to really take it to heart to really do something transformative in terms of of ecology and not you know economy based living only. Mm, and even especially like I uh, something if, I mean I'll just in my my points in this especially if, if you were to live a sustainable life after this uh, buying locally I think that is something that I always you know try to uh, encourage people is to buy locally buy from local farmers local designers local like retain that you know Lanka we are Kieneka as well as because see uh, living life i think we sometimes tend to forget where where what we use come from whatever we are using we need to really be aware of how that happens right and i think that learning it it will take time it will be very progressive but we really have to see we this is a time where we re need to realize that humans are not on, not on top of the food chain humans are not on top of this we are part of this world or nature as much as everybody else or as much as, as much as other species you know so i think we really need to be come out of from that egoistic way of looking at oh we are we are everything but but we are part of this whole thing you know so um yeah so i also wanted to add so what do we think is going to happen uh, post covid to all the all the environmental concerns i feel like from a trends perspective like there are a lot of trends which have uh, accelerated so there was like there was consciousness about the environment before covid happened and now i think uh, more and more people are um, you know thinking about the environment but there there are certain trends which have accelerated so this whole drive towards circular design or recycling upcycling all of those kind of things and i think now like like just looking at it from like global, um, globally, what's happening? Like even in, uh, universities and stuff. Now there are a lot more students who want to look towards social impact, whether it's, uh, social impact or environmental impact. But just as an overall worldwide trend, more and more and more youngsters are uh, try trying to be part of the solution. So, and then you also see this huge growth in. Uh, 
know, like self-development, self-help, like, you know, uh, awareness on mental health. So it's all about fulfillment, fulfillment in what you do, fulfillment in how you live your life. So I feel like that way there, like definitely, I feel like certain trends have been accelerated and they will stay even after, you know, everything goes to a new normal. Um, other things I wanted to just, briefly talk about was like self-sufficiency so we've heard about a lot of um, you know countries going more towards self-sufficiency and and something interesting i read like was even in india the prime minister said that so modi said that is because his lesson from covid was self-sufficiency and and how can we uh, you know everything on our own so, so, that, so that that's something that's going to go maybe through fear or whatever the reason might be, but it is pushing people towards that direction. So we, we also talk about urban farming. And um, yeah, so even in, yeah, during the lockdown, we've seen a lot of home gardening and urban farming take place. Um, yeah, and uh, I think those were probably, yeah, the, the main things. And I, the other thing I think is like, what happens during a lockdown is um, in, in terms of innovation, like there are, there are new constraints put up so constraints of self-sufficiency or of not importing and stuff like that. So that will that will inspire a lot of innovation inside and, and you know like people thinking up of new options and opportunities that can drive them to a new way of new way, new product, new services, new situations. Yeah. Definitely. Self sufficiency is a, a whole different um ball game that we haven't really looked into until now and I feel like like you said the lockdown has opened the eyes to the possibilities of being self-sufficient more and more yeah. um, that definitely uh, but that concludes all the questions that we have had so any closing remarks that you would like to add on uh, we can start with Donali and keep going Donali yeah uh, yeah. So finally, I would just like to uh, give a message to all the designers. Um, it's uh, or, or or yeah, mostly the fashion designers. I would say this is a really good time to really sit back and think. What is your uh, what do you want to give? Do you want to give a nice garment or do you want to really give something nice uh, story? Uh, because people are not going to buy go shop and buy a nice garment. Maybe to uh, what it's made out of, who it's made by, it's whether it's child labor or whether where it's made, whether it's locally made, um, everybody can ask for it. And how what how how long is the supply chain? They will definitely ask at this point, and the transparency. Um, so they are going to ask more questions of consumers. Um, so you you can't survive by giving a nice product. That's not going to be true to fashion. Uh, therefore, for designers, I would say, um, especially find yourself, find your identity and find that design identity that you want to give, but give something, a story, a process, a system, not just the product. Um, that's why I think you, as we all can change, uh, especially fashion. Thank you, Lanali. Um, uh, Nadisha, is there anything you'd like to add before we wrap things up? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it, it, it's great that we are being uh, questioning ourselves and trying to really make a change among ourselves. Um, my, my thing is don't, um, don't stress yourself, you know, try to do very, very things. Don't stress yourself. Try to be happy. Try to, you know, remain present, remain, um, always understand why you're doing something, you know, in, in this grand scheme of everything. Uh, in the grand scheme of everything, I think it's it's very important for us to self reflect. Even okay, like you said, you, I think you mentioned. Oh, when I, I when I go to buy something, you question yourself. Okay, do I really need this? You know, little things like that. But also, don't stress yourself. You know, and and just to try and find um, kind of because I think I, all of us we are all here. We are trying to be happy and we are trying to re remain connected and and just be light and enjoy our experience as a human being or you know life as such, right? So I think we all just need to. Um, really kind of yeah be, be just that and and try to find happiness in the little things and and kind of um, really understand how the world works i think even sustainability when people look into sustainability they do understand a lot of how the these different these these different entities work and i think it's rather it really helps you to know that and just to you know do your little thing and just you know be, be 
calm and be happy and, and all of that. Even even in the sustainable journey. That's neat. I, I like how you said happiness in the little things. <laughs> That's a beautiful thing to say. Um, all right, last but not the least, um, Seva. Yeah, so, um, so what I would like to say is that actually, um, if you look at, so I've been studying this, it's a model called the adaptive cycle and it's, it's a model of, which happens all throughout you know, uh, ecology and social economic systems where crisis is m very much part of life. So even in a forest, like when a forest fire occurs, naturally it, it is part of like evolution and the way the forest is healthy. So obviously here, all like, gone through a two months of chaos. Um, and what usually happens in the model as well is that when the chaos ends, it's time for the greatest innovation and a lot of reset, a lot of thinking has happened, a lot of self-reflection has figured out that these things we don't need anymore, we need more of these things, so what things are, certain truths have become, certain realizations have come true for us. So now I really think it's a really a good time for radical innovation and transformation and to really go deep into what it is, what it is that you want to offer to the world, what is what is your unique contribution to the world. And in terms of innovation, I want to say that like there's a lot happening in terms of circular design. I would, I would suggest reading up on circular design because um, the way we design as designers and innovators is changing. Instead of just building products and services, now you're looking at whole systems near the whole supply chain, like how, how do all these different pieces fit together? How does waste from this point to become uh, raw material for something else. So even in terms of innovation, like the possibilities are endless. It's just about um, first figuring out what is the you have to add to the world and then, you know, uh, doing your research and, and yeah, just following your passion. So um, that's, that's, that's like my ending message. Yeah. yeah, definitely. The possibilities are endless indeed. Thank you so much for being a part of this today. I had, I've learned so much. I mean, just to wrap up everything we talked about, we spoke about buying locally. We spoke about focusing on our internal values and not just the external aspect of things. We talked about self-sufficiency and, you know, going back to our roots and finding our roots with our ancestors and, you know, finding happiness in the little things, just like Navisha said. Um, once again, thank you so much for joining in. And I'm just going to hand control back to Parami so that she can take over the technical aspect of things. <laughs> I don't think I need to say anything else. I think Nesmi already covered everything. But uh, thank you so much for joining us, Semal, Lonali and Nadisha, even Gaia, even though she had to leave early. Uh, thank you so much. I've heard most of you speak before and it, well, it never gets old. And I love the discussion we had. I was listening to every bit of it and it was amazing. Thank you again for joining us.